na ako. Hi, Ja. Hey, Johnny. How can you say old age is no good? Old age is great. <laughs> if you live long enough, that's right. If you live long enough, it's great. Yeah. One side move, one side love. That's it. Punch in between. Punch in between. Oh, he said hello to me. Come here. You really said hello to me. You did. You heard him? John. Oh, the guy, the guy in the shirt. Oh, the guy in the shirt. You don't know him? Oh, who, who is this guy? Muhammad Ali. Oh, Muhammad Ali. Wow. Do you know him? No. You're talking about this man right here? Is that? You're a little bit too square. Your right, your right shoulder, you see, a little bit this way, it should be more this way. So when you drive it in, nothing to hold that blow. You're gonna do real damage. You might drop the guy with one punch, but you aim it here and bring the same hand. When he hits here, you drive it, bring it down. Even if he's coming, drive it, bring it down, bang, over here. Bang, with the left hook here, over here. See? You got a chance of putting three perfect punches if he's up standing. That's it, see, ain't no way he's gonna hit you then, right? And remember, it's always good to throw the punch where you could hit him and he can't hit you. That's what the science of boxing is all about. Remember from the side, you can let that punch go with the worst kind of intention because you know he can't hit you back, so you can throw the bomb with all the power you can generate. No, no, fight back and forth like this. Okay. Way. I'm not a creator. What I do is discover and uncover. See, my job is to take the spark and fan it. When it starts to become a little flame, I feed it. And I feed the fire until it becomes a roaring blaze. And then when it becomes a roaring blaze, I pour huge logs on. And then you really got a fire going. That's what I do with these boys. See, that's what I try to do. Outside my right hand. All right, now. See, now these are little things, but that's the difference between being a real pro and an ordinary guy. That's it, punch inside and then get out. Good. When Teddy first came here, he came here with the idea in mind of being a fighter. And I trained him as such. And he was becoming a fighter. In fact, he was a fighter. And uh, when I thought he was ready, I put him in a tournament, and he won every fight he had by a knockout. And it looked like he was going to make it someday if he stuck to make it big. But then I caught him wincing and, you know, grimacing and everything. In pain. I said, what's the matter? No, oh, nothing, nothing. Suddenly I pursued the point and I found that he had a serious back trouble. So I began to think, I said, well, maybe I can make a trainer out of him. I can train him and teach him to be a trainer just like I train him and teach him to be a fighter. So at first he wasn't so keen about it because all he wanted to do was fight. But after a while I tried to make him see and I think I succeeded. 
that if, if even if you're not a fighter yourself, you can become the same type of success through your fighters. Because if you take a boy and you teach him how to fight from beginning to end, part of you is in him too. So that when he fights, part of you is in that ring. And really, suddenly I discovered he had a real talent for teaching. The fellow was a born teacher. And he's the type of person that wants to help people, especially kids. And they come to depend on him, rely on him a great deal. So they become very close that way. You know, you made up for your mistake with being so like a tiger. But you also gotta use your brain. You gotta be a tiger and use your brain. Come and move your head side to side. Right? Of course, Teddy always comes to me when he, when he has some doubts or something important. Yeah. Otherwise, I, I'd let him do it because I know he can do it. I wouldn't let him do it if I didn't know he can do it. I'm the one that makes the final decision. But they know me and Teddy and I together. We're together. We're synonymous. I'm Teddy. Teddy's me. The guy this fast and this experience is very good. He's a very lazy boy. I don't get up and don't get nothing. Get a... I know, get me a can of root beer soda. Root beer soda. Get me a bottle of it. Yeah. A bottle of cake. And the Not a bottle of cake. Come here. Michael, when you play with my money, you're playing with my mind. I don't like you messing things up at the store. A bottle of soda, root beer, and a cake. Cho no chocolate. And you want the receipt with the Breaker 3-5. No breaker. Yeah, this is Little John. Who we got? Come back out handle. This is Little John. Yeah, you got the ready game, Little John. What's your funny? Oh. Catskill. I'm Big Mama's son. Ooh, there's my sweetheart. Ooh, Tony. The loser? Breaker five to six and seven eights. Oh, yeah. Good morning, my love. The light was on, you know. Missed it again? Yep. Get over here. Tell him I'll give him a cold one and a hot one if he comes down tonight. You know what I mean. My mother will give you a cold one and a hot one tonight if you come down. Tell her I'll be down. Okay. Come right away. Tell me better be here. I'm on the way, tell her. <laughs> okay. Come on, Fritz. I gotta open this. What do you do with the sunflower seeds, you know? These birds? Birds and the animals. They're better off being in this house than, than anybody else. I don't know. I first came here about 10 years ago when my family left. I was thinking of selling the house, which I got a good, was getting a good price for it at that moment. Yeah. Cross was managing fighters at that time. Just thinking to myself, all my friends in the past see me doing this, they won't believe it. But after you do it a while, you forget about it, you see? Oh, well, just like you've been doing it all your life. Cos made a proposition for me here if I would be willing to rent the house for the boys, that he has a couple fighters and for me to cook. So I said I was going to try it out to see how it works. And I seemed to enjoy it, doing it, with the, working with the kids. But I would say about 50 kids that I looked after them. All right. <laughs> <laughs> when he's a boy, the fox on the door. No. Oh, I was scared to tell him. Would you help me to a piece? He used to get to tell the cool out. Put the two bits of uh, gravy on yeah. here. The only guy at this table 
who always thinks about fighting. They always think about fighting, no matter what he does, it's Frankie Minicelli. Yeah, I fake this. <laughs> yeah, I fake this. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm saying. Well, you know, it's guy went to the restaurant, right? He took off a very expensive coat and hung it up. And on the coat, he put a little card. And on there, it said, this coat belongs to the heavyweight champion of the world, meaning don't touch it. Yeah. See? So he went about his business. He come back, the coat is gone. He said, right over where the coat was, is a little card, another card. This coat was stolen by the, the fastest runner in the world. Come and get me. <laughs> is that for reals? Yeah. Well, I don't know that it was real, but I wouldn't doubt that this happened or something just, similar. This happened to suppose. Most things that happened that we laugh at today <laughs> have <laughs> happened. Still, right? There's very few new things in this world, very few. That's why people are young. If they're smart, they try to profit by the experience of an older guy so you won't have to go through all the, the pain and suffering. But a certain amount of pain and suffering is good because it makes the person think they learn. the house. You like it? No. <laughs> you don't like it? What do you mean, no? What happened to the weeds? You die like people? Yeah, everything dies. Those are plants. You're making fun of our plants? <laughs> Those ain't weeds. Those are plants. <laughs> Come on. Show you this house. No, I'll show you. This is where the rock and roll gang lives. See? What's that screen? What's that screen? Oh, I can see. That's a screen to show the fight films on. What fight films? The ones we got over here. Got all fight films, all the old time fighters. See? Got Muhammad Ali. <laughs> yep, we got Muhammad Ali. Yeah. There's a lot of them, a lot of different ones. Have you got any sugar ray later? No, that's no, too early. We got mostly old ones. There's one, John Lau. Uh-uh. <laughs> Someday, maybe. Never. Don't say that. You don't try, you ain't never gonna do it. Come on. Everybody starts somewhere, John. Remember that. Right? They started like you, small, and with a dream. That's all. Shoot, shoot. Let's have a fight. Like one, two, three. Teddy was a rough guy. A guy that you can't fool around with. You're too dangerous. Yeah. You just look at him crosswise, he was going to hit you. That's the kind of boy Teddy was. Hey, hey, come on. Come on. And I would say now he changed. He has more love, <laughs> more understanding, yeah, yeah. and he also sees oh, differently. That's why he's so good to the boys now, because he see what he was. It's like you pick up the kids from the street and he's so good to them and buys them that and buy that. I, ha I feel that's the way he is. <laughs> and being he liked the kids as much as he did, he became very much involved in their personal life, you know. And many times after the training was over, he would take the kids out for dinner, for pizza pie, take them anywhere, swimming, whatever. See, he would take these kids, and they would naturally go with him. He's more like their own man than anything else, their father than anything else, you know. One thing, my mom's glad about me coming up here and learning how to do dishes. When I first came up here, you know, it was thick because I had to make my bed and do things like that. You know, it was tough. Like, my mother, not that she babied me, but she cared about me a lot, I guess. In a way, I guess I was um, protected or spoiled, maybe, in a way. Like, you know, make my bed and she'll make me my breakfast in the morning. 
and I had it tough learning these things. You know, I really, I don't want to admit it to nobody, but it was true. When I was younger, my father always was interested in boxing. I mean, you know, he loved it. He knew Cuss when he was a little boy. He used to shine shoes on uh, 14th Street, where Cuss's old gym used to be. My father bought me trunks, bought me a shirt, bought me boots, all black. So then I fought my first fight. All my friends were there. It was packed jam. I came in there, the announcement and I came in throwing punches. A lot of people thought I was going to be like, whoa. They all said like, whoa. And then lucky I fought a stiff. Thank God, it was my first fight ever. I fought a stiff and I beat him because I was tough. But I came wild and I was so tired. Next day, I couldn't even make a muscle in my arm. But you have to understand how bad he was when he came here. So bad that John, Don Shaniger said, you gonna make a fight out of him? Impossible. Impossible. Yeah? Yeah, that's right. So when you get to the point where you're not excited and you're able to, see, that's what you gotta tell yourself. Be completely relaxed. You're able to see everything that's going on. Your sense of anticipation is sharp. And that can't happen unless you're relaxed. Yes. Man who's thinking and worrying about getting hit is not gonna have a good sense of anticipation. Man. He will, in fact, get hit. And most important, when you get hit, like you get excited. When you get hit, bang, you get, oh, you get excited and your head comes up your hands. When you get hit, that's when you gotta be calmest. That's when you gotta be calmest, when you get hit. A professional fighter has gotta learn how to hit and not get hit, at the same time be exciting. That's what professional boxing is about. You gotta be clever, you gotta be smart, and not get hit. And when you're able to do this, you're a fighter. All right, now get up on the scale here. Okay, let me see. Stand straight. Let's see what you want. What's wrong with this girl? You must be less than 60. No. Yes, you are. Yes, you are. A scale don't lie. Scale lies. No, it don't. Stay still. All right, now, according to the scale, you're 58 with your clothes on. Take off about three pounds for your clothes. You're 55 pounds. Henry Armstrong on the left, looking to be the first man to win four world championships. He's already held the featherweight, lightweight, and welterweight championships of the world. They're at Gilmore Stadium, Los Angeles, California, March 1st, 1940. Scheduled for 10 rounds. This is the second time these two men have fought. In their first fight, November 25th, 1938, at Madison Square Garden in New York, Armstrong won a 15-round decision. It was a title bout, Armstrong being the welterweight champion and Gosher the challenger. Now their positions are reversed. Henry Armstrong's style here is typical of him. Head down on the chest of his opponent, wailing away to the body, and then shifting to an attack to the head. Can't stop that guy, I got so much energy. Teddy lives and what his house looks like. Yeah. It's a mansion. Where is it? In Athens. In the town? I don't know. You don't know. Mm -mm. What about Gus? Gus lives in the same place. The Teddy lives. So. Well, what's the inside of it look like? 
Looks like a mansion. And then you tie it, and make sure he's always holding it against him. Not too hard, you might put a hole in his chest. Mike, to look at him, he looks like a fighter. He's big, he's got the physique, he's strong. You know, he's awesome looking. But he, he's a kid in a man's body. And he, he's still, still young, he's only 16 now, he's 210 pounds, well, well developed. You make me proud when you slid. You do this in the ring and you're hitting. <coughs> he's like a good fighter. Be a champ of the world someday. Just keep your mind where it's supposed to be. Maybe God, you know, gave, gave him such a strong body. He figured, well, I give him a strong body, you know, I'll make him have to become strong another way on his own. He's not as tough or hard, I should say, as people think he is. Everyone that sees me, they say, oh boy, you got that Tyson, you're lucky, you know, you got that Tyson. He, he's an animal. He just loves to fight. He just loves to hurt people. You know, he's not afraid of nothing. Very good. Well, when we're done with him, he won't look like he is anyway. <coughs> See how you can slip punches without hitting back? This is the way you gotta slip. He comes from a tough environment. He comes from a hard upbringing, you know, pounds for Brooklyn. He never had nothing. He was down in that kind of environment. I know how it is. You, you can't trust people. You, you grow mistrusting. You, you know, anybody does anything for you, there's a reason. You know, nobody helps people. He's got the potential to be the, one of the, go down as one of the, you know, best fighters ever. But he'll only reach that potential if he keeps his head, you know, screwed on straight. <coughs> People going for a while, like, boom, boom, moving, bop, 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 move, bop, 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 move, hit again. You know what I mean? Keep it going. It's still this an exchange, and the guy's still fighting with you. That's it, there you go. Now you got, again, again. Who's the last guy to stop? Time. Very good, that's what I mean. Very good, that's what you have to do. One more round. <coughs> you my friend? Mm -hmm. My best friend? Mm -hmm. Do good in school. Mm -hmm. I don't know how John, Johnny showed up. Isn't that weird? You know, does it sound like true? You know, maybe it sounds like, but it's the truth. I'm only saying the truth. He was just there one day, and I just greeted him. I'm in the gym. I guess I was on my way in the gym, patted him on the head. Hey, kid, how you doing? You know, and that was it. All I know is that I really loved the kid. And he's been through more of life than some people at the age of 60. How you doing, Jenny? Good. Yeah. Keep doing it. You know what to do with the wires, don't you? When you get over there? Oh, yes. Uh, get over there. Yes, right there. Did you buy one? Yeah. How you doing, Johnny? Good, good. Thank you, Kevin. Right. I'll catch you later. Yep. See you later, John. Good, hey, Johnny. Thank you very much. See you, John. Okay, John. Get you tomorrow. Yeah, see you tomorrow. I'm gonna buy two, thirty-two cars almost if I'm rich. Go get uh, twenty-one Trans Ams, two Cadillacs, and about three Camaros. I guess that's all. It's gonna cost thousands and thousands of dollars. Maybe a uh, mm, 
Nazi. Very own house of my own, some slaves. I whip on the bed. I just feel that way. But I won't do it though. Nice, bad intentions. Nice. Okay, don't drop it. Don't drop it even a half an inch. And let it come the same height as your shoulder. So make sure your elbow straight across. All right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, Maine was a kid that when he came here, he was a kid without any confidence in himself. I'll give you an idea. I think it was what you would call, um, what people would call yellow or something, because he, they, they used to take his lunch money in school. I try to build him up here, give him confidence and tell him that he's, what he's scared of is the feeling. He knows how scared he feels. I said, I feel the same way. I said, and the same thing happened to me when I was a kid. But after a while, I said, hey, look, I'm either going to freaking starve to death or I'm going to whack this guy out because I, you know, I can't, I can't keep going this way. Clean that wrist out so you don't hurt your hand. I said, now throw with bad intentions. I can tell when you're throwing it with bad intentions when you're not. Throw it like you're hitting somebody you want to hurt. <gasps> That's better. Throw it like you don't like somebody. That's it. Throw it harder. Come on. That's better. See the difference? Mm -hmm. Well, it's in you all the time. It's just got to come out. You got to throw with bad intentions. When you're in the ring, you're not playing ping pong with the guy. Yeah, that's it. That's it. Good. That's how you got to slip. He comes from a good family, you know, a tough thing because her mother raised him, I think, basically with no father. She's a religious woman. She, she leaned on religion to help her through. I think religion was her um, ace in the hole. Second one, and then you were going to move. You got to start to move as you're throwing your last punch. Let, let me go to work today, oh, Heavenly Father. Be safe and sound and bring me back in one piece to my family, Heavenly Father. Give me the strength to deal with my job today, Lord. But I actually just keep my family together and bless us in any way that you see possible, Heavenly Father, and guide us forever. Amen. Amen. Sometimes I'd be so hurt because we didn't have enough money in the house uh, to make ends meet, and I would just cry out and say, Lord, have mercy on me, you know, because here I am trying to make it with my three kids, and I didn't believe in uh getting on welfare or anything like that because my mother never had it. So I figured if my mother could do it with nine of us at the time, I could do it with my three kids. So we like uh sit and I would just boo-hoo cry because I was so hurt and so alone. And he would just say, Ma, don't cry. And he would cry right along with me. And he would hug me and say, I'm going to take care of you. I'm going to, I'm, when I get grown, you'll never have to work again. And I says, well, when you get grown, I says, maybe mother, my, your mother have some money. And uh, so in the meantime, I, from, while I'm working at all these factories, I find out about a cooking job in a restaurant. So I came home that day and I said to me, and I says, well, I says, you're going to have to be the man. I said, because I got to work two jobs just to make ends meet. He had been on me about working with working up there with me because he wanted to make money. He wanted to help me in the house. He had more belief in himself than I had in him because I was hesitant about him with the big pots and pans, even though he's tall and in bunks and this stuff, and I was kind of worried about him. In the future, I want to become rich. I'm not a greedy or anything. It's just that I want, I just want to be rich. And whatever I want, I'll really try my hardest to get it. After I take care of my mother and 
Teddy and cuss. Forget about my father. I'm gonna take it and blow it. <laughs> And then I'm gonna be back on the same old. I'm before I blow it. I'm gonna have to make some like thirty million dollars. Nah, I make it thirty billion. Nah, I make it a trillion. After a trillion, I'll give up. <laughs> take a hundred. Wait, take a thousand dollars with me every night. And just blow it on electric games. Ah. <laughs> I go down on Saturday nights to the fights. I take them down to the Bronx. There's no place up here to fight. I start taking them down there every Saturday. Once I taught them how to fight good enough, I had to get them experience. No matter how good you train a fighter, without fights, they ain't going to be a fighter. It, so I started taking them down there, getting them seasoned, getting them exposure to this different kind of life, different atmosphere, the whole different thing. That was part of growing up right there. That was the whole, that was the whole education, a whole new part of the education. As you know, we got a lot of representing from the American Boxing Federation in here. They're supposed to send me a doctor. They didn't send it to me. Maybe because they was scared to be in the Bronx. Because maybe they, they, they got no guts to be in the Bronx. But I got a lot of guts to be in the Bronx. And to have all this See the flame now. Jabbing and slipping. Everything behind the jab, both hands inside, right? Yep. All right, go ahead. Go. and think about what you have to do now. Before you can get the guy, you know, where he's able to absorb anything, you got to get him in a calm frame of mind, which Frankie very rarely is in once the fight starts. So uh, that's what I work on mostly with him. Other people, I work on physical things. Frankie, I work on mental more. But well, all of them, you work on mental because boxing's about 75% mental. It's not as physical as people think. But with him, it's even more so. It's about 95% mental. So I got to really work on that part all the time, all the time. Frankie, come here. Where are you going? Be calm now. All you gotta do is relax a little bit. You can't throw one punch at a time with this guy. You gotta throw two or three. You understand? Deep breath. Let's see you work a little more this round, just like it's in gym. Think in there, kid. Come on. All right, follow right back with the jab. That was good. Now you look like a fighter. That's better. Follow up, follow up. Follow up, Frank. Jam, jam, seven, seven. Frank, when you, when, when you use your jab, when you stepped in with it, you hit him. Only two times you did it, and twice you hurt him. With a jab, not with a hook with a right hand. With a jab, you only did it twice, and both times you hurt him. Once a month, I go down to the city. You know, I go to Brooklyn. I feel good. I walk around there, because that's where I was brought up. You know, my, like, roots are there. Like, one thing I learned. The only thing, like up there, the crowd, forget it. It's nice. Like, especially where I live at Kings Highway, it's a big shopping area. A lot of girls, which I like, you know, anybody I like. I home and visit my mother and father. And it's good, you know, it's good to see him. My mother's always kissed me, grabbed me. It's great to see me. My father, too. My father, you know, he loves you, he asks me, how am I doing? You know, even though he, he prefers I don't fight, but, you know, he's still pulling for me and everything. Because I plan on making him box one day.
Yeah, all right, but the thing is, you're 23, you'll be 24. Yeah, and but... The years are creeping up on you. Yeah, but I still feel young. I still feel like and, I'm 16 uh, in a way. You know, I'm so when I get old, when I'm as about a professional, I'll still be baby, young. As a professional, if you don't make it in three years, good boxing, if you don't, then you're not going to make it at all. Nah, there's a lot of fighters oh. and champs that lose their first fight. There's pros. Look, everybody mm. can't be a Wooly Pep, or Joe Ross, oh, Archie Moore, or Billy Kahn, or Bonnie Ross. Everybody can't be the greatest. Some have to be second or third best. Yeah, I, know. I mean, let's face it. Okay? Well, I'm That's striving, what I'm trying, to I'm trying to be the first, you know. Because I'd rather do that than work. I'll be like Mancini and all them guys making the money. Like that. Oh. I know it, because, hey, anybody could do it. As long as if you want it, and I know I want it, I could do it. I just, just stop beating myself, and I could be, you know, sitting on a world tour like that. A lot of people say, ah, no. Nah. But this is, like, this is American. You could do it. Your mind is not on your work. Your mind is not on your work. There's something distracting you. Hi, young man. Yeah. Yeah. Did your mother say anything to you? You sure? Mm -hmm. Quite sure. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Sometimes I wonder. I don't think you'd tell me everything, do you? Do you? No. You'd tell Teddy, though, wouldn't you? Uh -huh. You remind me of, of Mike when I first came here. No, he is like that to a certain extent yet, but uh, he's improved so much. He's a good fighter, too. Cool. Mike. You think so? Mm-hmm. Oh, I don't think he's a good fighter. Do you really think so? Mm-hmm. What makes you think so? I don't know. Well, you must have some reason for thinking that. Why do you think he's a good fighter? Looks like he can knock out anybody. Well, that's a very good reason, isn't it? Very good reason to think it, anyhow. Mike Tyson came to me as a result of an interest taken in him by a fellow named Bobby Stewart, who was a former professional fighter. Now, he was 13 and a half years old, I believe. We trained him steadily. When he got to the point of slipping punches, we had a difficult time getting people to box with him because he proved to be a very hard punch with both hands. I think he did get some boxing just before he entered the Junior Olympic Tournament. When he did enter, he had to come out on top in the local tournament up here. That qualified him to go into the regional Junior Olympics, which took place in New York, where he scored all knockouts. And the winning that regional qualified him to go to nationals. Fist, easy. Keep it steady. Okay. You're all set.
the hardest part of boxing, you guys. The hardest part is the weight, right? Isn't that the hardest part? Once you get in there and you box, it's, it's not as hard as the waiting. Because when you wait, you start thinking about things. You know what I mean? You're saying, I'm going to get beat. No, no, you don't say that. You have to have confidence, say, I'm going to win. But still, your mind starts to think of things, you know. But you just got to be, you know, just have enough discipline to, to just go through it. Be a man. Michael, Mike! You're so nervous, you're getting farther and farther away. Loosened up your shoulder good? Yeah. All right, feels looser? Mm -hmm. Then you can start to loosen up a little faster. You can start to shadow box a little, especially when you feel the tension mount. Motion relieves tension. You're the champ. You're the champ. They're the ones who got to worry. If you weren't nervous, there'd be something wrong with you. That nervous feeling is a sign you're going to win. Sign you're ready, right? Sign, you're ready to win. Just gotta keep it up here and go do it. Everything here is right. Just gotta keep it up here. The next fight? Nah, a couple more. I'm not gonna take my title. No. No one is. smart and hard. Hi, right, champ. Champ. Hey, cuz, eight second knockout in the first round. Eight second knockout. Yeah, he said, the right hand. Yeah, he did. He set a new record. The official came over to him and said, you just, you just set a record. Fastest knockout ever. Yeah, eight seconds. Well, I rushed right over court, you know, I wanted to catch it before you went to the gym. Yeah. He's fighting a tall, thin kid. He, he's going to have no problem with it. He's going to hit the body. OK. And tell her it was eight seconds. All right. Bye. Bye. All right. Let's go home. Right. What is the difference between a hero and a coward? There is no difference. Not in what they. Uh, it's just that. Not the way they feel. They feel the same. It's just how it lets fear bother them. And no, 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 no. More specifically, see, fear. I mean, a coward and a hero. There's no. They're, they're the same. I mean, they feel the same. It's what they do that makes them different. In other words, the hero feels just as frightened as the coward. Yeah. But it's what he does that makes him different. It's what he does that makes him a hero, and what the other fellow doesn't do that makes him a cow. It's just as simple. It isn't that they're any different. They aren't any different. Tighter, but they're not getting it. Mm -hmm. Like smart and like a tiger. A smart tiger. Hungry tiger, but smart and calm. Mm -hmm. With a left jab. Mm -hmm. Like an arm strong with a jab. And move your head and cover. Mm -hmm. Once you get inside, sit up the that's it. Sit up the body punches. Concentrate on the body. 
switch over, right? Yeah. Okay. Use the eight. If he jabs, give him an eight. Especially if he tries to run. Give yeah. him use the eight. And if he runs, track him down like a dog. Use the eight. Yeah. All right, G. Let's do it. Win this title, then we'll go home to all our friends. Right? Yes, sir. Good. Oh. Look, 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 just relax, Michael, relax, just relax. Just relax. Relax. Yeah, but just relax. Just relax. I'm only first time. Yeah, well, just relax. Don't get so tense. Relax. All of this is another parking match. You've done it already 20 times. You've done it in the gym with better fighters than you're ever going to fight here. I mean, it's always hard, but I mean... Yeah, I came the wrong way, remember? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I'm like Tyson. Anybody likes me? Yeah, everyone I'm likes you now. Myself. That's right. You have reason to be proud. And you continue to do it as long as you don't let anything rest you up. As long as you don't let yourself rest you up. You continue to have people like you. Never just always remember, that's all. Just always remember, you know, don't let you... Feelings get the better of you. I never. Don't let things make show. That's it. Right, let's go get ready for a fight. Come on. Fighters have been very, very impressive. Our, a very experienced Mike Tyson, uh, who was a champion from last year, has been in national competition in Junior Olympics, has had five bouts and five knockouts. Let's read the statistics on Kelton Brown. Mike Tyson has not gone the distance in any of his fights. He has is being looked at, and there's been a lot of noise now being made about this young man as a possible Olympic prospect and a possible professional champion in years to come. He is also uh, being helped to train by Custia Amato, the former uh, manager and trainer of uh, former heavyweight champion Floyd Patterson. You're the champ. Fight smart and like a tiger in calm. Tyson has a great overhand right. Brown carries his left hand low. We'll see whether the two match up. There's a right hand. There's a left. A right He's left moving in. He's, He's got him in the corner. He's working on him. Right yeah, head goes up. He's going yeah. down. Another right touch of the body by Tyson. Very, very strong boxer, Tyson. Tell you, very, very strong. Brown has taken some vicious punishment and held on. He's still really in has. there. I don't think he's There's ready. another right by Tyson. He's just uh, left right. He's giving up. The towel's coming in. Look at old Tyson jump on the ropes. That is it. They threw the towel in. Threw the towel in. He didn't want to say anything. He threw the towel. Come on, come on. Uh, Michael, come on. Uh, Come here. Now listen. You got to act with respect. Come here. Give it to your opponent. Hey, you got a lot of guts, too. Come here. Come here. Come here. You got a lot of guts, kid. You have a lot of guts. And you just stick with him. Don't let this discourage you. He's a two 
two-time national champion. You stick with it, you're going to have your day. You understand? You have a lot of guts. A lot of guts. A lot to be proud of. You too. What's the rule? What's the rule? If you can hit him, if you can hit him with two, should you hit him with one? No. Well, then hit him with two. If you can hit him with two, don't hit him with one. Get off, get off with some, some meaning there. Come on, with bad intentions. Believe in yourself. Come on. The guy can feel it if you don't believe in yourself. Sometimes you start there. He looking for that. Next time you go, boom, and you shoot the right hand. All right, and follow the punches. I'll put them together. How you been anyway, right? Good. Good. Tell me what you've done since I've been gone. Nothing. Anything special? No. I was up here most of the time. Up. Doing what? Watching. Yeah? Asking Cus when he was coming back. You were asking when I was coming back? Mm-hmm. Almost every day. Maybe someday if you with me. Yeah, you become world champ, we can box anyway. Anyway, you want. yeah, we'll find places. If you will, we'll find any place you want to box. You want to box Florida, we'll box Florida. We'll box in um, Europe, over in France, we'll box over there. All right? When you're the best, you can do a lot of things. Remember that. Like but Kevin. You, yeah, but you gotta, to be the best, you gotta work hard. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of work. I never thought of that, you're right. Oh, can you try that out? I look good. Mm -hmm. You feel good too. You look faster. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we'll take We'll put these in a box. And you go in the garbage. Garbage. <laughs> I'll put them in the garbage? Yeah. How'd you learn how to say garbage? Okay. Now, first thing we went over, you gotta get yourself a good foundation, a good stance, the fighter's mm -hmm. stance. Show me the fighter's stance. That's it. Keep your knees bent. The weight on the balls of your feet, good. Your hands up right below your eyes, your elbows in. And even though it's all together, you're always relaxed. Mm -hmm. Keep your head down and remember one thing. Always remember that in order to be the best, you always gotta stick with it. Mm -hmm. Gotta stick with it no matter what happens. And when you feel the most important thing you're gonna find out as a fighter, you're gonna feel nervous, you're gonna feel scared, it's normal. You just control it and do what you've been taught to do. Okay? Mm -hmm. Right in there. Good. Perfect. Now let's get it going back. Very good. Now come forward, push up. That's it. Go backward. Come forward. Oh, you look like a yo yo. <laughs> All right, come on. Twist the other way twice and swing to this side. Hey, you couldn't do it much better than that. That was really good. You did that real good. Swing back. Sure you didn't box in some other state or something? No. You sure? Mm -hmm. I don't want to find out you did now, later on. Find out you have a contract I, with somebody else. I wasn't even in our state with Really? Mm -hmm. All right. I'll give you your leg raises again. Lay on your back. We're going to see how many you're going to do. Put your hands behind your head. 
Gotta keep your feet together, come up to about here, down to here, up to here, okay? Okay, one, two, three, four, eight, boy, we could go all night, nice. 20, okay, we'll stop at 20. That was very good. For a kid your age and your size to do 20, very good. And we gotta keep it up every day, all right? You gotta let me ride in your Cadillac. Yeah. All right, that's the, that's the agreement. And you, st and you stick with school, right? And do good, right? Go ahead. Dreams keep you alive, I think. Dreams keep you going. That's what this gym's done. By the maybe m main thing for these guys. Everyone has done something different. Little Johnny's just offered shelter and, and some, you and, um, and some love and, you know, he's not thinking about being a fighter right now. He's just somewhere where he's got attention and love. For the other guys, it offers dreams where they can all dream and, they, and they're all even when they come in this door. That keeps them going. It gives them something to, it gives them something to shoot at. You know, there's a saying, happy those who dream dreams but are willing to pay the tri price to make the dreams come true. That's why I tell the kids, you dream, you get a picture of what you want and that keeps you going. Then you gotta go work and make it happen. I dream that I could develop several world champions and um, that I could, I could have money, like it, it's a dream, but like I could really be in a position where I could help kids, just to give them a chance. You know, you can't help everyone, but I mean, you can give someone one help, you can give them their chance. Come right back, Jeff, and Darren, twist off those ribs. Twist off where you get him on it. And come right back before he gets a chance to get set. Come on, Darren, don't let your mind get to you. Come on. Come on. That's it. Come on, set your mind. Set your mind. Make yourself do it. You're doing fine. That's it. Come on. Stay right in. That's it. Very good. Use that jab and don't cross your legs. Very good. Keep it up. Keep it up. You got him confused. You're making him have to think in there. Chin down, Kevin. Bend for that uppercut. Chin down, Kevin. Chin down. Stay off the rope. Get off the rope now when you have the chance. Don't wait. Oh, jab, jab, forward. Come forward with your jab. And faint every once in a while. There's some snap in those punches, Kevin. You're pushing. You're pushing. You're not bending for it. All right, that's good. Come on, that's all. All right, John, see you tomorrow. Champ. Huh? Champ. Uh, I wanted him to, to get ready. Go ahead, get ready. See, my job is to take the spark and fan it. When it starts to become a little flame, I feed it. And I feed the fire until it becomes a roaring blaze. And then when it becomes a roaring blaze, I pour huge logs on. And then you really got a fire going.